Hey everyone, uh, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, uh, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, and a variety of other places when you search for my name or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm really excited to be sharing with y'all this week about um, some of my uh, favorite bulletin boards to use for Music at Our Schools Month or just really any time to use for music advocacy and chat just a little bit about that. And then I'm going to take you through um, a lot of my plans for my upcoming second grade concert. It's going to happen in about four weeks. Um, and I'm going to share with you some of the songs I'm using, resources I'm using, and plans that I have for that second grade concert all about the ocean um, and songs from the ocean. It's going to be a really fun concert and I'm excited to share um, along the way. Speaking of sharing, um, if you are not already a part of my Facebook group on Facebook, um, I would encourage you to join it. You can find it on Facebook by just searching Every Moment Matters Music Education Community. Um, and it's a place where I'm sharing ideas that maybe um, people might have fun commenting on or things that we can work on together. It's a place where you can go and post your questions. A lot of people have posted really fun and interesting questions in the last week. I'm gonna be in a really limited space or I'm gonna have more people in my room or I don't know what to do with this resource or I have questions about this and it's so cool to see us coming together as a community and answering some of those questions in a really positive way um, without judgment or anything you know negative that goes in like why would you do it that way but here is this idea that I have that I'd love to share um, so that's really fun so you can find that if you go to Facebook and just search um, every moment matters music education community or if you go to the um, the links page for this video uh, on my blog at makemomentsmatter.org under the links um, or under the videos tab or you can just search on their Musical Mondays recap page. Um, all of the links are available and that's in there as well. So Facebook, you can go to the caption, click a link to go to that review page. Instagram in my, um, my profile link, you can find that review page in there. So, um, oh, one more thing um, about sharing um, coming up. Uh, before I'm before I get onto my regular stuff for the week, the regular schedule program, um, I just want to sh share, and I know I've shared about this before in a couple places, but I'm so excited. I'm getting more excited every day. Um, I'm going to be a uh, part of the faculty at the Tennessee Arts Academy this summer. Um, a, a really really cool and innovative program um, that brings all sorts of artists uh, from across the country, and they're going to be visual artists and theater folks and music people and uh, arts administrators. It's a really, really, really cool program. Been going on for a long time. Um, and I'm so honored to be uh, invited to be on faculty there this summer. So if you live in Tennessee, or even if you don't, <laughs> you can apply to be a part of this program. Um, early bird registration just ended, but I know that you can still apply if you go to their um, website. So that's the Tennessee Arts Academy if you're interested. Um, if you've been a part of the Arts Academy, please send me a message and say like, this is what happened and we really loved it because while I'm very excited, I am still making plans because I don't exactly know what's gonna happen quite yet. I've, I have lots of plans, but um, so if you've been to the Tennessee Arts Academy, shoot me a message. I would love to, um, I'd love to hear about how your experience was and what you really liked and what you would love to hear more of um, and that sort of thing as we go forward. So I love, I love that advice. All right, so uh, before I jump in, as always, your comments and your questions on these videos are just so valuable. It's so great to see people interacting together um, and commenting and having pe teachers who are watching the video comment with other teachers. And it's so great to see that and great to see y'all interacting because it, then it means that this is more than just me sitting in front of my phone <laughs> taking a video, but it really is a community effort and we're really having sort of more of a conversation. So thank you so much for your questions and comments as we go along the way. Um, so before I talk about my second grade program, I wanted to share just a little bit. I know it's Music in Our Schools Month. Um, that's one of the cool initiatives that the Nas National Association for Music Education um, has put forward to help us with advocacy and help us um, sort of just connect with parents and students talking about why we have music education in our schools. March is Music in Our Schools Month. And one of the things that I always try and do is use my bulletin board space the best I can. Um, you know, because bulletin boards, I know some people just hate bulletin boards and they hate that I'm talking about this. But bulletin boards are there to advocate for you even when you're not around. And I, I would argue that bulletin boards are a super duper valuable tool and you shouldn't just set it and forget it. You should, you know, put some time into those so that, you know, even when you're not around, it's there to speak for you and to speak to, as to why music education is important. I, I cannot tell you 
the amount of times that I put something on my bulletin board and think, well, it'd be cool if somebody sees this, but I'm not gonna, you know, get my hopes up or whatever. And then a teacher will comment about it or a parent will ask me about, out of the blue, ask me about something that I put on the bulletin board or, uh, you know, an administrator will say, hey, let me, let's talk about that thing you posted. And I'm always, a little taken aback that they took the time to read it, but then so happy that I spent the time doing it because the their reactions and their the comments and conversations that come from those bulletin boards are just so valuable. Um, in my very first, I just have to tell one story. My very first year teaching, I or a, a few years into teaching, I put up um, a set of posters. Every month I have the, these sets of posters that have musicians that were born this month and a little bio about their life and whatever. And every month I put, I put them outside my door. And um, it's, it's something that was just fun to create and um, it's now in my TPT store. But um, I put them out there for one month and I remember a teacher who I did not think liked music like I, like when her kids came she sort of dropped off and left and whatever and we didn't really have a relationship at much at that point and I remember she said to me you don't have Freddie Mercury out and I was like what and she, she goes you're musicians of the month you don't have Freddie Mercury you haven't had him any of the months yet and I was like oh well it's it's based on the month you know that, that he was born and she was like I'll be looking in August or I mean, well, I don't remember what month he's born in, but it was just so cool that she like, obviously every month had gone through and had read them and like had this fun connection to Queen. And I had no idea that, that about her. And so it was just so cool. So ever after that, I was like, okay, th these bulletin boards are important. So I just wanted to show you a few that um, I have that are sort of fun that you might consider using um, to advocate for you this month or, or another month. So since it's March, I thought I'd show you one of my uh, favorite sort of seasonal things. This is called, uh, I, I put up the header for this one. It says, thank your lucky clover for music. But um, it's it's leprechaun themed. And so each um, little leprechaun page has a picture, a little, you know, themed boy or girl in the sort of, um, you know, leprechaun-y St. Patrick's Day colors, etc. And it says something about luck. When Lady Luck invites you to dance, let her choose the music. Um, Let's see, or um, so they're either about music or they're by musicians like this one by Loretta Lynn. In the long run, you make your own luck, good, bad, or indifferent. Sort of cool. Um, let's see, oh, Hector Berlioz, the luck of having talent is not enough. One must also have a talent for luck. So they're sort of cool. They have either quotes by musicians or about music. Um, and I, I love the ones that are like, hey, luck isn't a thing you should work. Like this, <laughs> um, the harder I work, the luckier I get by Samuel Goldman. I, I just love that. So um, anyway, these are sort of fun little posters and they're all themed around St. Patrick's Day. And then there's um, this little header poster that says, thank your lucky clover for music. And it's got little uh, leprechaun-y sort of music note things. And then if you want the bigger version, <laughs> you can, um, there are, I know these sort of look weird um, because the I'm using my FaceTime camera, but um, there are little gold coin notes and there are uh, four leaf clover notes and then there are a pot of gold notes um, and you can print those out and um, put them in and around your posters. They're just sort of fun and it is themed in the month. But what I really love about this is I have extra little pages that I can cut out and give to kids. And I know it's sort of hard to see in the video, but it says, um, I'm lucky to have music in my life. And there's this normal page or there's a page with lines if you want it. But kids can write out a little story of why they they think they're lucky to have music in their life or what they like about music. And then it can become an interactive bulletin board and you can post their answers around these posters. Um, and people can say like, ooh, that's my answer. Or they say like, that's my kid or whatever. And it, it makes the bulletin board feel like something that everyone is a part of. It's not just something that you're putting up for the month. I love those interactive sort of bulletin boards. I think they're super duper effective. Um, another one that I actually, I do have out on my bulletin board right now, um, because March is not just music in our schools month, it's also Women's History Month. And so I've shared a little bit about this one, but um, I, it's called Divas, Influential Female Music Makers. Um, I, I wrote a blog post about this because as I was creating this resource, I was like, I don't know how to limit myself to you know just a few profiles. And it became really hard. I ended up making 50 different profiles of different female um, musicians, composers and singers and um, instrumentalists and conductors and um, names that probably you know and maybe some that you don't. And so what I did, um, and you can see this in the blog post I wrote, 
um, I, I broke them down to a week by week setting so that each week um, there are different um, names, there are different people. So I'm trying to get like, so, okay, Liza Minnelli, she's great um, for musicals, uh, very well known for that. Jesse Norman, who is an opera singer. Um, Leontine Price, also an amazing soprano. Uh, oh, sorry, Barbara Streisand's Upside Down. Um, Joni Mitchell. So it's it's all different names. Uh, Fanny Mendelssohn, all different names, all different kinds of people. Gloria Estefan. So not just one kind of musician, all different kinds of musician, all different ethnicities, all different um, time periods. And so um, I, I broke them down and I do it week by week. Like I said, I have 50 profiles. So every week um, I put out, I think like 12 and then I rotate them through. Um, so there, there are new names every week. And kids love looking at them and they're colorful and fun. But also it's just a great tie into Women's History Month um, and just a great way to encourage people to see the women in music because they're everywhere and um, not always appreciated the way that they should because people talk about Bach and Beethoven and Mozart, but there are all of these amazing women who have shaped the history of music. So that's one that I put out in March. Um, and that one I call divas, but, um, there's a little explanation slide that I put up to sort of next to all of them that says like, why do we say divas and blah, 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 and opera. And, um, it's, so that's a, a fun connection for that month, but it could be any month. I mean, that could be any month. I just do it in March because it's women's history month that you could do it whenever. Um, here's one that I wanted to show you because it is music themed, but we'll get you like super thousands of points with your administrators, um, and English teachers. Um, it's called What Makes a Good Opera. And um, so it, it goes through and basically breaks down an opera. It talks about what does it take to make a good opera? Well, um, you know, a good opera is a good story. And so it talks about um, uh, beginning, middle, and end. So there are little slides or little pages for each one. Um, it takes actually the story of Cinderella, the opera, and breaks down what happens in the beginning, what happens in the middle, what happens in the end, and gives some examples of that. Um, it also talks about, uh, so Cinderella by Rossini, talks about character, it talks about plot, talks about setting, um, and, and your, your language and writing teachers will love this. <laughs> and so for each of those things, character, plot, setting, um, I have lots of examples. So for instance, Gypsy from the Force of Destiny, Il Forza del Destino. Um, uh, oh, sorry, I've jumped into the next category. Setting, um, Ancient Egypt. And then I put the, the opera that's from, Aida. A Dungeon, Tosca. Um, a Bullfight, Carmen. A Fancy Party. <laughs> that's really nice to say. La Traviata. Um, so there, there are all of these fun things. Um, and it was really, it's sort of crazy trying to dumb these down so that they're not as um, spicy as operas are, but, uh, tricked into taking a youth potion, <laughs> uh, magical musical instruments help to perform difficult tasks. Uh, someone takes a love potion. These are a uh, plot, not allowed to marry betrayal exclamation. <laughs> so those are fun to put up. Um, oh, let's see if I can find my very favorite one. Oh yeah. So character bird catcher <laughs> princess. Uh, count, countess, witch, professional party go goer <laughs> slash courtesan. That's what I put for Traviata because I didn't know how to say like really nice, really nice prostitute. But um, anyway, so it's fun because uh, the kids are like, oh, they like see all these different things and they see character plot and setting. And your language teachers will love you for talking about beginning, middle and end and all of these elements that they use in their writing ELA anyway. And then I also have um, a little page that talks about the national standard and how um, you, you know, how it connects to that. So that really it is a focus on music and music education at the same time that it is a focus about um, plot and character and setting and storytelling and all of that. Um, so speaking of national standards, um, I always try and put the national standards out at least once a year in the hallway, if not all the time if possible. Um, because people, it, it's not that they don't, care, I think that a lot of people just don't know. They don't understand. They're like, oh, well, when I was in elementary school, we, we sang and, you know, we had keyboards or whatever. They don't know what happens in our classrooms or what could be happening. So I always try and put out the national standards. Um, these are based on the new national standards, the core arts standards. So creating, uh, performing, 
Oh gosh, upside down again, sorry. Responding, um, all of these things. I, I try and put these out there and I really try and put examples of each. So if possible, I put a picture um, and I try and put out like examples from our actual classroom and lessons that we're doing that show each of those standards, maybe in different grade levels. So then people will stop to look at the pictures and then go, oh, they're creating or oh, they're responding or evaluating or whatever it is that's in that specific standard. I love using that and I love having that out in the hallway. I have a bunch of different colors and things, but this is just my favorite one. It goes with my classroom theme right now. It's like geometric or something, I think is what it's called. Um, but there are a lot of cool things you can do. And then one more, again, that I think that your administrators will love, but again, really shows the value of music education. Um, this one, many, many, many years ago, I, I created it. It's free on my Teachers Pay Teacher page, but it's called uh, Blooms in the Music Room or Blooms in Music Rooms. Um, and for that, for the header, they're big, colorful instruments. So if you want like a, a, a header for your bulletin board, there are big, colorful instruments with um, the letters that spell out Blooms for Blooms Taxonomy. And then it goes through and on each poster, it will say um, the taxonomy word and give examples of that in the music room. So for analysis, I have distinguish between instrumental sounds, differentiate, uh, form identification, interpret, infer, guided listening, correlate, connect, just words that explain what we do in the music room that show that specific aspect of Bloom's synthesis, transpose, orchestrate, jam out, play in an ensemble, collaborate, arrange, let's go to another, one more, evaluation, explain, assess, predict, self-evaluation, prioritize, group discussion, choose, defend, all things that we do in the music room. Like I said, this is a free resource, and one of the fun things about this is that it helps us as we're planning. Um, it helps administrators as they are evaluating us. I had a, an administrator who was like, I've I've been, a, I've been doing this for 20 years, 30 years, whatever, and I never knew how to judge um, the, the, the music teacher when it came to Bloom's Taxonomy. Like I, I never knew what examples were, and these are examples that I can see. So when I come in, I can say, oh, he's doing that. That is evaluation in the music room, or that is whatever. And so I know some people use, I think this is the old Bloom's Taxonomy, and there's like a new, slightly different language for the newer Bloom's Taxonomy, and I have both options available. Um, and that's a free download on my Teachers Pay Teacher store. And all of these are in, linked in the, the video notes if you're interested in them. But things like this are so great because it helps people who are maybe not musicians or, or don't feel like they can connect with our content. It helps them connect and understand what we do and how what we do integrates in with what they do. Um, that bulletin board I showed about what makes a good opera and how all good operas, I mean, yes, it's music, but it's also just storytelling and it's, it's helping them see and connect in maybe a way that they wouldn't otherwise. And it helps us, it's, that opera bulletin board is such a silly example, but it's so nerdy. Like I love going through and talking about all the crazy things that happen in opera, um, you know, and people being pulled uh, through time and, uh, you know, all these different kinds of weird characters. And I mean, there are just so many odd, fun things that happen. It's fun. To, it was fun to make and put up that bulletin board, but um, it's also fun for people to see that and go, wait, that's really in in that opera, I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's an Italian, but that's really, <laughs> that's really what's happening. You know, they drank a love potion or whatever. So um, I love putting up these bulletin boards and letting them speak for me even when I'm not around. And they help to advocate for my music program even when I physically can't be there to say like, no, 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 music education is worth it. When they see that in the hallway, they can sort of make that determination on their own. So that's sort of cool. Um, and like I said, there are, there are a bunch of resources. You can use all different sorts of things, but I just hope that get, this gives you a little bit of inspiration and encourages you to spend some time on those bulletin boards and, and thinking about what you have out in the hallway or what you have in the display case or what you have that maybe someone will walk by your room and look in and what will they see. Um, think about that as you're going forward this week. Um, and there are like I said, some free things that you can just go and download and print and hopefully they'll uh, benefit you in your classroom. If you have questions about any of those, send me a direct message or leave a, a question in the comments. Um, and like I said, all of those are linked on the links page. Let me just see. Um, some people are talking about, there's an older resource that Becky says she uses that uh, she put a link to. Um, I just taught Carmen to my advanced learners. 
Yep, it's it's tricky trying to make these operas PG for the younger kids, but um, you can you can do it. I mean, they're not going to go listen to the Italian or French or whatever, but they'll remember Carmen later in life, and then they'll laugh about the stories you told. Um, okay, so these are just some bulletin boards. Like I said, it's Music in Our Schools Month, and this is one way that you can um, try and connect with MIOSM and um, try and advocate for your program all the time, every day, even when you're not around. And, and it really does, it really does help you connect with kids and parents and teachers um, and administrators. It's, it's worth the time. So, okay, those are just a few examples of the bulletin boards that I use. You can find more if you go on my blog, makemomentsmatter.org and search uh, decor and bulletin boards and advocacy. There are tags for each of those on the, um, on the blog and I'll be posting more pictures and things this, this month as we go through. So I wanted to spend some time, I'll switch gears a little bit. I want to spend some time talking about my upcoming second grade program. I'm really excited about it. It's um, about four weeks away. So I'm like getting to the point where like I'm getting more stressed, but I have a first grade program next week. So I can't get too stressed about second grade because I got more things to do next week. Um, but I wanted to share just a few things that are still sort of guiding me on this glide path down uh, towards the second grade program and share with you how I'm using them and why I'm using them. So um, my program is about the ocean. It's uh, an underwater program. I did a version of this years ago and I'm sort of retooling and revamping. That's why uh, when I finished this concert years ago, um, I took all the songs and games and everything that I used in the concert and I put it in a manila folder and I saved it. Because even if, I think maybe I'm using one or two songs from the original concert I did years ago, even if I don't use anything, I can use this as inspiration or it'll help me remember like, oh, I bought that one decoration from Dollar Tree or whatever, it, it gives you sort of a, a reminder of what you did before. So if you do, if you do a concert, save all the stuff you use and keep it to review and revise and, and bring back later. So. Um, I want to show you just three books that have sort of inspired me as um, I as I craft this program together. It's not a canned program. I didn't buy it from anywhere. I'm just pulling songs together that would already be in my second grade curriculum or maybe a carryover from first grade that we're jazzing up to do for the concert. So I'm not bringing in anything like really crazy and new, maybe one song that would be out, out of my normal rotation to put in here so that I'm not, I say this, I'm not wasting my time. I'm not spending time on things that I wouldn't normally do because I see kids, I think, about 20 times a year, if I'm lucky. So to take six or seven of those away to do songs that don't really fit or don't have as much musical value doesn't make sense to me. So I try and pull songs and things together that already sort of fit in with our standards for the year. The theming it around an ocean, not too hard. So, um, Three of the, the books that I'm using that have inspired me right now, I've already shared a lot about this one. It's called Wendell the Narwhal, but if you haven't checked it out, you definitely should. Uh, Wendell's a cute little narwhal who wants to be musical. Oh, he wants to join in so well, much, but he can't sing or can't. He's just not, he's, it's just not working. And he gets really frustrated and taps his tusk, his little tooth on a rock. Um, and it, everyone in the ocean goes silent and he is chosen to be the conductor. So, oh my gosh. They love this one. Um, but I thought about using this maybe as like an, an inspiration for the program, but I didn't really have anything that was conductor that I wanted to use. There's nothing that really fit in quite as well. So I figured I would just keep it, use it for lessons, and um, maybe the next time I would bring that one out. Um, there's this book called The Fish Who Could Wish. Um, and this is by John Bush and Quirky Paul. And I just will show you a couple pages from inside. Um, and it starts out, in the deep blue sea, in the deep of the blue, swim a fish who could wish, and each wish would come true. Oh, the fun he would, that he had, oh, the things he would do, just wishing away in the deep water blue. And then it shows some of the crazy things he wishes. So, uh, he wished for a castle. Oops. He wished for a car. He wished for a horse and a Spanish guitar. So he wishes for all these crazy things. Let me just show you the ending. Um, that silly old fish wished that he could be just like all the other fish in the sea, but wishing was something other fish could not do. So that was his very last wish that came true. It's sort of a fun book, and um, I've used it before for other little lessons throughout the year. Um, I've used it in the last you know, five minutes or whatever of a class where I've talked about ocean songs. 
And, and it's fun, but again, it didn't quite fit in exactly the way I wanted. I, I wasn't sure how I would adapt it or change it or, and use it. So I decided not to go with that one. The book that I am going to try and use um, as much as possible is this one called Commotion in the Ocean. And this is by Giles Andre and illustrated by David Wachtowicz. I, I know I'm not pronouncing this correctly. I'm very sorry. But I, I in the links page, I put those, I typed it in so you don't have to try and phonetically spell out what I wrote. I put a link to that. Um, but it's a fun little book. Um, it starts out like this. And actually, if you, there's another book called like Rumble in the Jungle or something. And there, this author has a, a series of these books. So um, if this looks familiar, there's probably a reason why. Um, so it goes like this. There's a curious commotion at the bottom of the ocean. I think we ought to go and take a look. You'll find every sort of creature that lives beneath the sea swimming through the pages of this book. There are dolphins, whales, and penguins. There are jellyfish and sharks. There's a, the turtle and the big white polar bear. But can you see behind the wrecks and in between the rocks? Let's take a look and find who's hiding there. So it's sort of a, a fun little lead in, but on each page there are animals and then each animal has a short little poem. So. The crab says, the crab likes walking sideways, and I think the reason why is to make himself look sneaky and pretend that he's a spy. And let's skip ahead and read this one, dolphins. The wonderful thing about dolphins is hearing them try to speak. It's not, how do you do, as I'd say to you, it's more of a click, whistle, squeak. So there are just a million options for like fun sounds or actions or things that kids can do. My plan, and I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do this, but my plan is to have kids read the poems in between our songs. Um, I don't know if I wanna do them live because uh, then, mm, then the kid has to be there and I, I don't always know if kids are gonna show up or will they remember, will they get too freaked out? So what I've done in the past is sometimes I record them reading it and have like a, a picture that matches or a picture from the book or whatever that up on, on a screen for people to see. And then that makes it sort of a nice simple transition because I can just like press play and then I can go and not worry and stress out about a kid at a microphone. I can just let it play. And if I did two or three little poems at a time, I could put like bubble sounds in between and it could be like a 30 or 45 second thing where I have the 30 or 45 seconds to help get the transitions happening. Um, and, then, and then that can sort of be our transition. Or, you know, once people stop clapping for one song, you make your transition, you press play, and then once that's done, you go right into the song. So there are some options there um, for how you use the book. And this one lends itself really, really well to using it like in between songs as sort of transition material because it's not one long narrative like Wendell the Narwhal is just one long story. Um, this is little snippets that you could read all of or some of or none of um, and they, they help sort of weave the program together. Obviously I'm gonna be doing the blue whale and it goes, there's no other beast on the planet as big as the giant blue whale. He measures a massive 100 feet long from his head to the tip of his tail because I bought that huge blue whale puppet and obviously that's going to come out. Um, and so obviously I'm going to use that um, in this show and somebody's gonna like, you know, bring it through, hilarious. Okay, so that's my plan is to sort of weave everything through using the poems in the book. Um, and I, like I said, I've been leaning towards recording the kids ahead of time so that then it's done and um, it's, I don't have to stress about it. And one of the cool things you can do is if you take um, the kids recording and then take their picture, you could like flash up, like if you, if the, you know, I don't know, if Jefferson read walruses, well then you could put up either this image or a clip art image of a walrus and you could put the picture of Jefferson up on the screen as his voice is being heard and then his parents like love that. And all parents sort of love that, honestly. And then you can see who that is. And even if they don't show up, you know who it is and you can see them. Um, I see some people on Instagram saying, I've recorded ahead of time with great success. The readers are more expressive when not in the spotlight. Amen. And you are not stressing out about, are they here? Do they remember? Do we have everything? So that's sort of cool. Um, someone says, I draw large shapes that fit with the theme of the program. 
cool. And then their comment is lost and I can't see all that. <laughs> I'll have to go back later. Um, there's a lesson in Mallet Madness Strikes Again for the Commotion in the Ocean. Ooh, I have that book. I'll have to go try that out. Um, when you use a book, do you read a page and then sing a song or do you take pictures of the pages? Um, and then Jennifer's comment is sort of cut off because in my live view, I can't see everything. Oh, wait, I can. Or do you take pictures of the pages for a PowerPoint to go along with the songs or a bit of both? A bit of both. Um, it, it really depends. And um, I try not to use whole books verbatim. But what I really do try and do, again, with these books is I use them as best as I can. And then I put a link either on my learning management system or in the program or somewhere else to say, hey parents, do you love this book? Your kid's gonna remember it forever. Here's where you can go buy yourself a copy. Um, sometimes I send out that email ahead of the concert so parents can like get on Amazon and buy it um, if they're interested so that, um, you know, I'm using this book to theme my concert. I want the author to get something out of it. Um, so I would love if they would, you know, parents would buy the book. But I, I also like to share it because ki parents do really like that memento and they like being able to say, hey, guess what? We're going to read Commotion in the Ocean. We're going to read the poem you read, blah, blah, blah. And so it's fun for them to pull out and say like, ooh, let's go read it with grandma and grandpa or whatever. So I, I like having these books and giving links for parents to go and, and purchase them. Okay, so those are the three books that sort of guided what I wanted to do. And let me just run through some of the songs and tell you how they're going and what we're going to do with them. So um, before I start, I'll just say, I know I've shared this before, but this book is so good. It's called SOS Songs of the Sea. It's by Lynn Kleiner, and it comes from um, Lynn's brainchild music Rhapsody. Lynn is a fantastic music teacher and clinician. If you can go to one of her workshops or conferences, you should. She also loves puppets. So obviously, obviously I am a fan of hers, but, um, I bought this book when I went to one of Lynn's workshops years ago and I love it. And I'm pulling songs from it for so many different classrooms. Um, and so, or, or, or lessons for different grade levels. And so I think it's just an invaluable resource. You should go check it out. But um, actually one of the songs that I'm gonna do comes, comes from that uh, program or from that book. And I'll come back to that. So I, I don't have the order of what I'm gonna do yet. So I'm just gonna sort of share the outline of what I'm gonna do and give you some ideas. So the first song um, that I'll talk about is the song goes, um, the river is up, the channel is deep, the wind is steady and strong. Oh, won't we have a jolly good time as we go sailing along? Down the river, oh, down the river, oh, down the river we go. Down the river, oh, down the river, oh, down the Ohio. So one of the things about my concerts is uh, I have to have them in the gym. There's not a big enough space for us to have our concerts to fit everyone. One of my grade levels could be as many as 200 kids. Um, and all of their parents and grandparents and neighbors and everyone else. Um, so I have uh, everyone in the gym. We won't all fit on risers, so we don't even try. Um, they sit with their classrooms. So they sit, you know, 20 or whatever together in little blocks um, up towards the far wall. And then so for like for this song, there is a, a dance that has um, alleys and an alley and they, they like come in and out and do a clap. And then they come in and out and do a clap. And then the two kids on the end, I call them the magic two. I don't call them the head couple because if you say couple, it's, you're, for a pun's sake, you're up a creek without a paddle. No, because kids freak out when you say couple. But um, so instead I have the, the magic two who are the two on the end. Um, they come together, they take hands and they sashay down the alley. And you can do two of those for every verse. Down the river, oh, down the river, oh, down the river we go. That's one one pair down the river oh down the river oh down the ohio that's the second pair and they go down and through and and you cycle through until um you get everyone through the alley kids love it it's fun um but you can easily do it for a program so what i'm going to do is i have all of my classes sort of against the back wall of the gym and if there's ever like a, a y'all sing song um, we all sing it just together from where we are. But for this song specifically, everyone gets to sing it, but only two classes are going to demo. So those two classes would step forward. They make the big long line formation, and there'll be one class on one side and one class on the other side. I don't mix them together because they're used to working with the kids in their own class. They are not used to working with other kids. <clears throat> so that just sort of invites troubles. But so there's one class on one side and one on the other, and they demo the whole thing and we make it all the way through. And then we would switch out classes um, so that then another class can demo another song. So two of my, uh, how many homerooms are there in second grade? 
eight, nine, ten, I have to look, but two of those classes get to come up and demonstrate. Um, one of the things is we are practicing it this week, um, the actions go, so you and you're looking across the alley at your partner and you go, the river is up, the channel is deep, the wind is steady and strong. So for the first four beats, you walk in, walk in, walk in, you high five your partner, you walk back, walk back, walk back, and clap, clap. So you can, if you look up this song, you can see the directions for this. What's tricky is it goes walk in, walk in, walk in, pat your partner's hands, sort of like a high five, and then walk back. My kids are never together, and it's what the river is up, the channel is clap, 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 clap. And it's, it looks crazy, it sounds crazy, and it was driving me crazy because they couldn't figure out how to get it together. Um, and so one day in desperation, I went and I got out my slapstick <laughs> and I said, this, this slapstick is a very fun instrument and it makes a clapping sound. It makes a loud clapping sound. Just listen. And so I clapped it and all the kids went. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, isn't that so fun? I'm going to use this in the song. So guess what? We're going to go, the river is up, the channel is deep. And I, I clapped it where they're supposed to clap. I'm like, try and match your hands to the slapstick. Oh my gosh, it worked so, not the first time, the second time it worked, because the first time the kids were like, Ugh, he really did it. But the second time they got it. And so this, the sound and the clap that they were like anticipating, it got them to all be together. Oh my gosh, and it was like magic. So I used it in the next class and it also worked. But it took it took a little bit of them getting used to it. And then once they got used to it, I was able to take it away and they still kept the claps at sort of, sort of the correct time. So, but I'll just say that I had to preface it with, ooh, this is a fun instrument. It makes a great clapping sound. It's a little bit loud. Just listen. And I did it before we, I incorporated it in the song and it worked great. So <laughs> if you ever have a time where you need kids to clap at a certain time and they're not doing it, this might be a wonderful, help and it's cathartic for you if, if they're not doing it and you want them to do it it's, it helps them get together okay um the next song is um charlie over the ocean so if you don't know that song it's a fun little song charlie over the ocean kids echo charlie over the ocean charlie over the sea charlie over the sea charlie caught a big fish charlie caught a big fish can't catch me can't catch me so it's, it's a an echo song um and when i first teach it i have i sing the first part they echo i sing the first part they echo and eventually um there's a game to it eventually a student sings um and then um the kids echo. So there, there are options you can do with that. I think I might end up having, I might have me sing and they echo. I might have one class sing and they echo. It might be the kids who are standing who are not um, doing the demo who sing the initial part and everyone else echoes. I'm still working that out. But there are gonna be two or three classes that come out and they make a quick circle. Um, because it's, it's a circle, it's basically a duck, duck, goose game. But, um, and I've talked about this before, but what we do in that, instead of like, just choose whoever you want, it's the very last word. The song chooses who gets to be picked. So instead of a kid just choosing their best friend every time, wherever they end up at the end of the circle, they reach down and tap and can't catch me, can't catch, tap, and then they go. So um, it'll be fun to demo that. The thing I'm gonna try and do to make it even more exciting, because um, parents will be interested like the first two times. Kids would play it forever, right? Like they, they wanna play this game. The parents watching it are like, okay, let's move on. So after the, the second or third time, I'm gonna say, ooh, can we do it quiet? Can we do it loud? Can we do it a little faster? Can we do it slow? We're gonna do some contrasts some musical contrast so that parents are like, oh, they're doing it a different way. <laughs> it sort of keeps their interest, but kids would do it forever. But um, it'll, it'll just be fun to sort of change things up just a little bit like that. Um, and so, like I said, again, those like feature classes come out in demo and then they go back. What's also nice about doing that is that then the, the parents who wanna like sneak in and take a picture aren't doing it for every song. They'll do it for the song where their class is the feature. So that's sort of cool. Um, there's another song we're doing about um, some dirty, grubby pirates who don't know how to clean and recycle, and um, they're going to be taught how to do it. It's a cute little song, um, but it's a song I learned in my student teaching that I was like handed by my cooperating teacher, but it's a song that I don't own the copyright to, and so I'm not gonna share it here, but um, there are so many fun little, um, 
like songs about pirates or about sailors or whatever that you could use. Um, if you wanted to pull from like your, um, your textbook series, there's usually one or two songs in there about a, a sailors or pirates or something, or you could use a sea shanty or something, but this is our, like our version of that. Um, so that kids can come dressed as pirates and it'll fit the theme or whatever. But, but also it's just a really fun song and it's right in their wheelhouse. Um, then I'm doing a song called uh, Larry the Lobster, and my art teacher uh, goes to uh, Bar Harbor every year in the summer, and she loves lobster, and she found out last year that I love puppets, so when she came back from Bar Harbor this year, she brought me this little puppet, this cute little finger puppet, and he's a lobster, um, and so and there's a song in Lynn Kleiner's book, SOS Songs of the Sea, called Larry the Lobster. Hooray! And so uh, when the kids first learn this, they learn this with Larry and they have to help Larry stay safe because Larry is a nice little guy and um, he does his own thing and he walks along every day on the bottom of the ocean. He digs in the sand and he swims. <laughs> I just love this puppet. Um, but there are predators in the ocean. And there's a, so the song basically goes, there's a, a cute little sing um, song that's... Um, Larry the lobster, Larry the lobster, digging in the sand all day. Oh, what a guy. Larry the lobster, Larry the lobster, swimming along his way. It's super cute because then they take the actions and they put them in their hands and put them on their knees when we're first learning the song. Um, and so then it goes, look out, Larry. Here comes a fish. Here comes a fish. So they switch from singing voice to speaking voice. And then we go, run, run, Larry, run, hide front, or hide in the water. Run, run, Larry, run, run for your life. So it all is a sit and use your hands to do either the steady beat of the walking or the running or whatever to do the actions. That's the initial lesson. What we do to make it more exciting for this concert, um, they are gonna stand up and on the running part, they're gonna run in place. So that'll be fun. Uh, and then at all the kids get to sing it. So the kids who are not actually doing the acting are going to basically be our chorus because the kids who are doing the acting are going to be very distracted. <laughs> they won't probably be able to sing. So um, on, on the, the Larry walking part, um, they are going to do the crab walk around the gym. And then look out, Larry. They're going to go, oh! <gasps> and stand up and freeze, and then they get to run in place for the run, run, Larry, run. It is gonna be a crowd pleaser, I am like almost absolutely sure. And so the three things that come to get Larry are a fish, so I can either get a fish puppet or something that I wanna use. Um, there's a shark, and so I've got this amazing shark hat that I'm gonna fill uh, with like that cotton filler, um, like pillowcase filler stuff to make him sort of puff out a little bit more. Um, so look out, Larry, here comes a shark. And then the third one is look out, Larry, here comes a net. And so the nets I'm gonna find, I think the PE teacher said that there's a soccer goal net that they can pull off the goal and we can use. But um, it's gonna be that process. There are just the three things and they get to sing and walk and do the crab walk. And it's gonna be super cute and fun and the kids just love the song, but it had all this great musical value going in. It still has all that value, um, but we just sort of jazzed it up a little bit um, for the for the concert. I found the little lobster. I think online they call him like uh, like Chomp the lobster or something, which is weird. But I found him, and it's only like seven ninety five. So if you're interested, I put a link to that on my links page, and you can go find Larry for yourself because Larry is like the world's cutest little lobster, and I just love him. But I also love that it's two separate fingers because then I can do like um, hands separate on knees with kids. It's very easy to demo. Okay, so Larry the Lobster. Um, the, in my last time I did this concert, I did Down by the Bay. You could also do like Long Legged Sailor, um, different sort of fun songs. Um, the next one we're gonna do is called Eyes the Bye, um, which I know that I have talked about this in other videos, um, but... <coughs> If you don't know, it goes, eyes the by that tilts the boat, eyes the by that sails her, eyes the by that catches the fish and brings them home to lies her. Hip, 
your partner Sally Tebow, hip your partner Sally Brown, Bogo, Twill, and Gate, Morton's Harbor, all around the circle. It's a fun song. Um, it's from Newfoundland in Canada, and we talk a little bit about that, which helps them understand some of the weird, really weird vocabulary that they don't understand, and so we talk about that in the initial lesson. So what we did, uh, and actually I saw um, at Texas Music Educators a couple weeks ago, I went to a workshop with Susan Brumfield, and she talked about this song and said, there is no, I mean, she's like, I can't find, there is no original folk dance to go with it, but I made one up. And I was like, oh, good, because that's what I did. <laughs> I don't feel bad about like, oh, I'm not using the original folk dance. Well, there isn't one, so. But it, it, it works really well, uh, and so I just made a silly little folk dance. But what I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna have three classes demoing this song, and the first time we sing through, because it's a short, sort of short song, the first time we sing through, one class is gonna do it and do the little folk dance we made up. And it ends in, a, it ends in sort of a promenade around in a circle, right? Okay. The second class, um, we're gonna get out our stretchy band and they're gonna do a little routine based on the folk dance um, with the stretchy band. The same sorts of actions, only they're gonna be holding the stretchy band. Um, and this stretchy band is fabulous. I'll come back and talk about that. And then the third group, um, so the first time is just the dancers, then they stop. The second time is just the stretchy band kids and then they stop. The third time is kids on a parachute. So the same sort of wheel formation I can use basically the same actions um, and then they stop. And then the fourth time through, all three of those go together, the folk dance, the uh, stretchy band and the parachute. And that'll be fun to see in the gym. And um, the cool thing about that is that um, if you teach them all that folk dance, you can adapt and modify that dance and use basically the same actions, just they're holding a stretchy band or a parachute. Um, you can basically use those same actions because our actions are like go in, go out, go up, go down, that sort of thing. And that's something you could do with a stretchy band or a parachute too. Um, so the kids who like do really well in the folk dance will get to upgrade to either the stretchy band or the parachute. I'm not just gonna choose a random class to be like, eh, I don't know, I hope you're good at the stretchy band thing. No, like it, it's only if you have been successful with the previous thing that you get to do <laughs> the fun stuff. So let me talk just a little bit about the stretchy band. The stretchy band um, is from a company called Bear Paw Creek and I've linked to them in the video. This actually is the coolest stretchy band in the world because it's called a connect a stretchy band. It comes in little pieces and it clips together. Oh my God, it is brilliant. I don't know why all stretchy bands don't do this, but I have multiples and I can clip them together to make a really huge circle. I can make several smaller circles. Um, it's amazing. The one thing I am still considering, they also have this hub, looks sort of weird like a spider, but the cool thing you can do is you can hook in your stretchy band to the hub. And I like have these weird grand visions of like, we could make a huge octopus <laughs> on the gym floor, but I've only got four weeks, but um, we could make like a really cool octopus and like this could be the center and like it could swim out and I don't know, I'm still figuring that out, but it's just so cool and I've got the pieces that like, you know, I'm, I'm still considering. But this is, a, it is not your average stretchy band. It's a very cool stretchy band from Bear Paw Creek. Um, and you can get the hub separate. You can get the multiple pieces. You can do whatever you want. And then it clicks in and clicks out and it's just, it's brilliant. So anyway, um, I see someone asked, do you have a resource to get the stretchy band ideas uses from? No. Um, there, th there are pieces of little things sort of all around and, um, you can you can blog you can search on websites and things like that through blogs to find those ideas. But I don't have like a book or one go to place for stretchy band. I'm still I'm just using it for all sorts of things and figuring out what works best. And especially with this one, Lindsay, it's it's tricky because it's not just a normal stretchy band. You can disconnect and reconnect and use whatever. So like I one day randomly out of the blue was doing Lil Liza Jane and. Uh, gave each little mini group one stretchy band and they made little um, street cars. They turned themselves into street cars and if they held on, they could go around. I mean, there are so many things you can do with this that I was like, well, I could get a book, but I don't know where to do that. And there are a thousand other things that will come from it. So it's, I've just been sort of making it up as I go. And someone else says, I like your yuking. Do you accompany in the concert? Yes. Um, I either play piano or I use the ukulele. 
um, or guitar or whatever, but um, I, I like those sort of live things and I can control them from wherever. And the ukulele you can take it with you. But I'm still figuring out how do I wanna mic the ukulele so that parents can hear it and how I'm gonna balance that out. But um, the piano is easy because I have an electric and it plugs into the system, but the ukulele I'm still sort of figuring out. Um, but it, it's, it's nice because that's what kids are used to. So it's not like they're making a huge jump and I'm not, you know, tracks are great, like recorded tracks are great when they work. And, <laughs> you know, if you don't have like a stumble where like kids miss an entrance and you gotta like rewind or troubleshoot with a, with a ukulele in my hand, I'd be like, oh, they missed that entrance. Well, let's try it, here we go again, you know, and then I can get them back on. Um, and then do you use it in place of a parachute? I actually, um, I talked a little bit, Lindsay, about how I'm doing it three ways, the folk dance, the, the stretchy band, and the parachute in this song. So all three. Okay, cool. Let's see. There's one more song. Oh, yeah. The last song, our closer, is obviously going to be Baby Shark. Um, so I'm still trying to figure out how I want to do that in a way that'll be fun and exciting for the kids um, and also not completely <laughs> make the parents hate me. But honestly, I think that it's going to be... Um, it's gonna be a, an audience participation and that we'll have kids come up and show the different things you know, that the parents can do and then we'll ask them to do it with us because the kids will love that and the parents will like that and um, they know the song anyway. So it'll be perfect and fun and um, that's gonna be probably our closer, honestly. Um, Lindsay asks, wireless or wired voice amplifier to amplify the uke question mark? I've toyed around with putting like the lavalier mic down in the ukulele or on the ukulele, but I have not yet found a way to do that that works. There are ways to mic your ukulele really easily, but not with my weird archaic sound systems. <laughs> it's one of those where you're like, well, let's troubleshoot and figure out what works. So um, I'm still sort of figuring that out. Okay. Um, Oh, and Claire says there's an easy baby shark play along for ukulele. Well, that'd be great if my second graders were ukulele, <laughs> but maybe I could play the easy one and um, they could do it, but, or maybe I'll use it with my ukulele kids later. So those are the second grade songs that I'm using. Uh, down, down the River We Go, uh, Charlie Over the Ocean, The Pirate Song, Larry the Lobster, Eyes the Bye, and Baby Shark. And in between, like I said, I'm gonna be using excerpts from Commotion in the Ocean um, to sort of weave everything together. And um, the, the last sort of element that I'm still figuring out with my art teacher and we are scheming um, for the backdrop, for the decoration in the gym, um, we're gonna give each kid a scale that's like the size of a piece of paper and they get to color it however they want. I might put patterns or ideas or things on there that they can color in in fun ways. And then we're gonna put all the scales together to make like a huge fish on the wall so that each kid gets their own scale that becomes a ginormous fish. Still working that out, working that out with my art teacher who is wonderful and has been doing this for forever. And she's like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll get that. So that's my plan. And I still have four weeks to figure it out. But I think it'll be so cool to see this ginormous fish up on the wall that's made up of individual scales from each one of the kids that they've colored on their own. So that's where we're going. And I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, there are a lot of links on the links page on the recap page. So if you're interested in that, go check that out. Um, if I talked about something but didn't cover it or you asked a question on the, the live feed, I'm gonna go back and try and answer all those questions in the next week or so. Um, but I hope this gives you some ideas as to you know what you might do or how you might adapt. Oh, and I see Janelle asked a really great question. What will the children wear? Um, st to be determined. <laughs> um, I toyed around with like letting, saying like wear a Hawaiian shirt or wear a pirate costume, wear a sailor costume or come dressed in ocean colors. That's probably where I'm gonna go. I don't like saying, you must be a shark. This whole class is gonna be goldfish. This whole class is gonna be clownfish because what about the kid who cannot pay for a costume or, you know? So I, with all my concerts, like the, the farm concert that's happening next week with first grade, I said, you can be a farmer, you can be a barnyard animal, any kind of barnyard animal, or you can wear gingham, or you can come in colors that you think would match. And so I like leaving it sort of open-ended so that parents can say like, oh, well, we can't go out and buy anything, but you already have this shirt with a big picture of a shark on the front. And, and in every class leading up to the concert, I sort of go over those ideas about what could you wear, what could you wear. And usually there's a kid who I'm saying like, oh, 
Claire is wearing all blue with a green skirt. She could wear that to the concert. Or I could say like, oh my gosh, um, Aiden has a shirt with sharks on it. That would be perfect to wear for the concert because it has an animal from the ocean. And so I try in every class to pick out like one kid who I'm like, if everyone wore that, I'd be cool with that. <laughs> I mean, you can go like whole hog crazy and come dressed as a pirate, good for you. I'm all about that. Or you can wear a Hawaiian shirt, that's great. And so I'm gonna have those like, here are options, but give them, you know, like you can pull from your own closet and you don't have to go spend $40 on a costume or you know, whatever. Cause I know that there's that mom who's like, well, I gotta go and get the special fish scales from Hobby Lobby that are, you know, or like her daughter's gonna show up in like a net and she's gonna, <laughs> she's gonna be, you know, something at the bottom of the ocean. I don't know. There, you know, there's gonna be somebody come as like a whole pirate ship. Like that's gonna happen. But I like giving kids options and giving parents options, especially parents who maybe don't have the means to go and like buy a costume for just this one event. So I like, I like um, giving people those ideas. All right, so I, like I said, if, if I covered or I didn't cover something and you're like, I still have a burning question, send me an email. My email's makemomentsmatter at gmail.com or a direct message either here on Instagram or, or Facebook or leave a comment. There are like a thousand ways you can send me a message and I get most of them. <laughs> Unless you message me on Twitter and then I, <laughs> I don't really find it because I'm so bad at Twitter. So don't look for me on Twitter. But no, I am on Twitter. I'm trying to get better at it. So maybe message me on Twitter and be a challenge. Um, thanks so much for joining in tonight. I hope this has been helpful. And like I said, reach out if you have questions or check the links page. I've tried to put a lot of resources there for you too. All right. Have a great week, everyone. Enjoy teaching your kids and having fun with them this week.